Now, isn't this a beautiful day? Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. Today, on this beautiful, warm, sunny day, I decided to go and work in my bird garden. I'm slowly building it up to bring in more species of birds or to at least have what they need and want. So I'm adding in new flowers, I'm adding in different types of seeds to grow, and I'm letting certain plants go to seed. So when they come in, the small seed eaters, they'll have fresh, green, soft seed. Right now, I am going to move some of my fountains and fix them up. I let a lot of them go. You know how life happens and it's like every day you're going to do it and you don't. You end up doing something else, maybe something more fun. Well, today I decided I'm going to move a couple fountains. So I've got that feeder on the top, or I should say it's not really a feeder, it's a planter, though sometimes I used to put a tray of bird food up there. And I do have a tree collard that has to go out of there. It's like two and a half feet tall. It's ridiculous. But for now, I'm going to leave it. I'm filling it up with sand. This will give me a platform for my little water bottle solar fountain. Because it's sitting on the ground. It's so small. I can use that beautiful log down there with that's cut that Gary had cut straight across. And I can put something bigger down there. So I'm balancing it on there with the sand. It's not really balancing, but it... It, I can straighten it out, kind of level it by eye because I have sand now instead of just soil. So that's where I'm putting that. And if you hear any sawing in the background, Gary's taking out an old pepper tree that was basically too close to the chimney and in an area it shouldn't have been, it got too big. So he's trying to get the trunk out because he's going to grow more elephant food there. So that's the background noise. But now, this is gonna be really cool because it's up high and once the hummingbirds find it, they can get a drink and so can everything else. And I think it looks better that way. And I love solar fountains that are portable that we make. They're so easy and fun, easy to change out. You get tired of them, put something else up or swap them around. Get the birds to get used to different things that you're putting out. So I wouldn't change them all in one day because well, that might just freak them out a little bit. But if you want to change some up, you know, take one and put a different style in there that you're working on and kind of change them around that way. And this way, it keeps them entertained and they understand that it's friendly. It's, it's their safe place and it's just something new. So I think that's going to look really good. So I've got the frog one going and that's an old one I had from years ago. And now I've got the bucket there. It's a... Um, Actually, that's a food container. You can go watch the video with a water bottle that's cut off. That just works fabulous. Hummingbirds come to that all day. They love it. I've got one on the deck. Now, this is a second soda bottle one I made with a dark kind of a navy blue type trash can I got from Dollar Tree. And I want to go back and use that teal one, more of the aqua one. I think it stands out. And I did make two. I'm trying to get in the habit of making two so I can put one on the deck and one in the garden, especially if I like it. See, I think it pops. I like that color. The birds don't care on the color. You can use any color you want. It's The color is what you like. So I'm going to swap the old dark blue one out and I never decoupaged it or did anything with that. I can plant in it or I can hold it back. And I'm thinking of making some really cool cement projects coming that might work on that. So I can use it for something else. And um, I think it'll look good. My problem is I really need to cut back the salvias because they're blocking everything. But for nature, I think I'm gonna leave it. I'm still thinking as I'm working in the garden because there's not a lot of flowers around and we're into fall now. And so you've got fall flowers, but that is a favorite of the hummingbirds as well as all the bee type pollinators that come in. Your carpenter bees, your bumblebees, your honey bees, your little bees that are around here, the tiny native ones, they all feed on it. Well, I'll tell you something, we'll get into it another time, but your bumblebees, a lot of your honey bees, and yes, the carpenter bees actually cannot feed on salvia. What? You say, you see them in there all the time. They don't feed on that flower in a conventional way. They have learned another method of getting the nectar out. I think I'm going to leave that for another time. Maybe I'll tell you in a few minutes as we go on. So anyways, I think it looks better. Doesn't that look nice? 
You see my sunflower I put on there, and now the bottle's going, and we know the hummingbirds love that. Will they come and take a bath here, though they bathe all day on the deck? I don't know. They might. They have, so we'll see. Now, I'm still deciding on what I'm going to do. As far as feeders, I'm going to get some more feeders out. I would definitely want to get more flowers, and I'm trying to see if which ones are running. I think all the solar fountains now every single one is working and that's a good thing except there is one tucked away a candlestick that works off and on depends on where the solar panel is sitting so i've got my bowl in the back with a cup i'm going to take that one down eventually i've got a new style on how to make a cup with a bowl and it's going to be fabulous so i'll change that out but it might not be for a little while but i've got better ideas. I think it's going to work fantastic. I got my cement one fixed because Gary, let's see, I had two of them. Gary had to fix the wires on that got cut by something. I don't know if it was me or some little rodent in the yard. I'm not sure, but they're both working now. So my bowl with the two gallon green bucket in the back is working. And then my other bucket with the cement bowl I made, I, I made it out of with a bowl and it's designed. It's got flowers and hummingbirds on it. That one's running. Oh, the birds love that. They get on top of that, take a bath, drink, and everything. And what I'm doing now is I'm kind of turning some of the feeders around because I notice when I sit back, if the feeders aren't level the way they're hanging on the branches, and remember those cross branches I put there, that keeps hawks out, and it works 100% in here now. So if it hangs kind of lopsided, if it leans back, then I can't see the birds that are feeding in there. You'll just see their little heads popping up. But if I have it level or slightly leaned in which the place I'm sitting I can see, then I can get a good photograph or at least watch them as they feed. So I'm kind of changing some of that around. And I'm also gonna maybe fix a couple where they don't swing as much. You know, that's the nice thing. When you start setting up your garden, setting up your balcony, deck, or wherever you're gonna set up for nature, you can change it. You sit back, you look at it, and then you think, gee, I know a better way of doing it. So you can change it up. And they're so cheap to make your own bird feeders. Oh my gosh. I mean, some of them cost me a dollar. Some of them I splurged, and maybe it cost me $2. And then if you can go to the thrift store and find some bowls, it won't cost you much at all. So you can just look for all kinds of feeders and bowls in different places and if you use a lot of food containers, you can get those for free. So I think it's it's coming along nice. It's nice and green. I've got a lot of flowers in there. I've got the hummingbirds lunch in there. And then I've got the salvias in there. And I have some emu, fla emu plant flowers. Uh, they're growing. I've got pink ones and yellow ones. It's hard to see. They're very small, but the hummingbirds do feed on it all day. And I want to get a whole lot more in there. Oh, my zinnias aren't in there. They're off somewhere else in a pot. But boy, we have had dozens and dozens of spice finches in here. It's so cute to watch them. They've been bringing their babies. And then I haven't seen any of the pintail whitest for a while. They raised them, but I think they're off on their own. And I'm not sure if they went back to nest again, the spice finches, because the ones coming in have no color. So I'm not sure. They might have done a triple nest this year. If they've got the food, the birds will nest. Now, as far as food, I actually go, or Gary goes and picks it up at a feed store, you know, like where they sell chicken scratch and all your food for your farm animals. You can also get bird food there. So he gets a budgie mix, and then we get a finch mix, and then we get medium sunflower, and we mix that all together. And then I buy peanuts, so they get peanuts, and now I just got some spray millet. I haven't put that out for a while. It's kind of pricey. But I went ahead and had Gary pick me up a box of spray millet because I'm going to grow some of it. And this way I know how it's going to grow. So I'm going to put it out, and they haven't seen it. So I don't know if they're going to eat it right away. Birds, like your hummingbirds, your regular birds, if they don't know what something is, they're going to wait to see if somebody else is going to test the waters. In other words, they're going to test the food. Or, or some of them, especially the young ones, they're a little braver. They'll come in and try things. Adult birds, a lot of times, don't try new things as quick as the juveniles. So keep that in mind. So once the juveniles try it, then the adult birds will eat it. But they have not had spray millet in quite a few years for me. Now, some of the seed that is in the finch mix is the same small, tiny millet 
that is on the spray millet. It's just off of it, it's loose. So I'm hoping that some of them will recognize it. I do know that since we've been putting out finch mix a lot more, that the goldfinches are coming in now to eat. Our goldfinches are called lesser goldfinches. So they're smaller than the ones that are on the East Coast. And your East Coast goldfinches eat sunflower and larger seed, where the lesser goldfinches are smaller, more petite. They eat more greens. Um, boy, do they eat greens. They're eating my lemon verbena seed, and then they'll eat the seeds off the brassicas, but the brassicas are kind of done. So they're looking for new things. So they might go to the spray melon. So that's basically it for today. I just wanted to get some stuff done because I've been working on different fountains on the deck. And then I wanted to come in here and go through all my fountains here. Anything that needed cleaning, remember, never throw away your solar fountains. If you set them up and they stop working, the odds are a little seed or something got inside the little flywheel. You pop it open. I've got video showing how to do it. And in seconds, you can have that thing running again. And if it's been out for a long time, it gets algae or something in there, easy to clean. Hard water, I can show you how to do that. And if you cut the wire accidentally or something comes along, we've got videos on how to fix that as well. Now, as far as the salvia, what I decided here is not to trim it because there's not enough flowers out there. And I think it'd be silly or sad just because I want to see the fountain in the back with the frogs and the fish to trim it. And then I'm cutting the food source for the pollinators, for bees, and even the hummingbirds. So I decided, you know, I can, I can live without seeing the back where I sit. So I can stand up if I want to get a photo on something. And that's basically it. I really enjoy my bird garden. And you can make it as big or as small as you want. And like I said, I'm protecting them from the hawks by putting the cross beams of the branches there. And that's basically it. There's nothing nicer than sitting back and having a cup of coffee and watching the birds in the morning. And then yeah, there's the pollinators. All right, you know what? I'll give you a hint on this. I would like to see if any of you can tell me. Hummingbirds go down the trumpet of the flowers. But look, if you watch, 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 they do not. See, what is that bee doing? Can you tell me what the bee is doing? I'd like to see if you can guess. Some of you may already know, but if you notice, they're not going down the horn of the flower or the trumpet of the flower. Isn't that cute? The goldfinches are coming in on the back, splashing water everywhere, and the water is almost empty, and I just spilled it. So you tell me how the bees here have learned how to get that nectar out in a way that, well, I've got photographs that I did not expect until I started going back and looking at my photos and went, that's what they're doing. Do you know what they're doing? I'll give you a hint. Look, look, look. Oh, you almost saw it. Watch, because they have to check each flower. What do you think they're looking for? They're looking for a certain mark on that flower. And if the mark isn't fresh, well, then they can get some nectar out. And of course, the hummingbirds, they're here all day on the salvias. So that's why I don't want to cut it. So with that, have a wonderful day. I'm going back to work in the garden to do other things right now. And isn't that beautiful? The bees and the birds. Or I should say the birds and the bees and the flowers. Bye-bye. There's a hole in the flower. Look closely. See those holes? They have learned to make a little hole and extract the pollen and the nectar that way. Cool.